teach sport management. Sport management. Sport management. Yeah, sport. So I, I teach like I mean the courses I instruct in the civil service. Which is nice. Would you be going to India, Nepal, or just? I went. I went to the Philippines last. Sport. 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 Sport.
ఇంటర్నెట్ వర్క్ చేస్తున్నా ఉండదు
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mehdi Khan. On behalf of SHE, Sports for Hope and Independence, I would like to welcome you all to today's seminar. I appreciate your presence here today, despite your busy schedule. Before we begin, let me tell you a little about SHE. We were founded in 2016 with the vision to provide access and proper sports coaching to underprivileged communities. Our mission is to run consistent and sustainable sports for development program, providing access to opportunities to participate in recreational and competitive sporting activities while contributing to the social upliftment to the communities. Since its inception, she has completed seven projects successfully by using internationally proven methods to utilize sports as a tool for child and youth development, girls empowerment, and life skills development for of physically challenged individuals. Papul Almodan, he is the head of sports development. He's been actively involved in implementing all our projects. So our, as, a, as our first speaker, he's going to discuss the challenges he faces in his everyday activities. Papul Almodan. According to UN Nation, Bangladesh current population is 163 million. According to the survey of UN in 2018, according to World Health Survey, 16.2 percent people have the disability. And 43 percent people have physical disability, and 8 percent people have intellectual disability. According to JICA. So what is disability? According to medical term, if there is any limitation of, according to medical uh, definition, if there is a limitation in physical or mental, what is preferred as a normal range, that is disability. However, according to social, uh, social definition, if there a person is only disabled if he don't get proper chance. It could be like if there is a building and there is no RAM. So the building made him disabled. So for excuse me. So for better understanding, can we try to write down our name in right hand? in our uh, most dominant hand. Some cases people are quite crazy. They don't have the ability to write in their hand, with their hand. So they write by using <coughs> their mouth. If you don't mind, could you write? <laughs> Are we able by right? People always say why sports? Disability sports is a 
sports, uh, recreational or competitive sports for a person with disability. And when someone participates in sports, <coughs> if he go to the ground, there will be family member will observe him, NGO or volunteer will uh, observe him, sports coach, he, he will have the opportunity to interact with fam family members, NGO, volunteer staff, sports <coughs> coaches, health professional, friends. He, he could also get the connection with na uh, local and national government, also wider public. And because they have also lack of awareness about the disability sport. The family, disability sports is very new in Bangladesh. So can't do anything. So they are always dependent on someone else. And they don't, don't, don't understand what they can do. Our transportation is the biggest issue, and education could teach them that there is a there is a provision of disability sports exist. E facilities accessible for wheelchair user. Since there is no disability sports practice, there is also lack of coaches, and our government policy is not disability friendly. Though. Though there is an act that every person in our country should be treated equally, but in reality, the scenario is, is opposite. Society. And through participating in sports, people can easily create safe space where they can come and they can meet. They can show their ability. It also increases their uh, level of physical activity. It, it can give them opportunity to <coughs> believe that they can also do participate in sports, they can go out. It also helps them to understand healthy lifestyles. It also gives them improved access and education opportunities. Because when a person participates in sport, whole community observe him. Because sports ground is a, <coughs> is a meeting place, people often go there. Even when they understand he can play, they will give him opportunity to study and sometimes they also create a uh, ramp or make uh, accessible school for them. And through participating in sport, they also have the awareness about their rights as well. We know like we have a lot of difficulties in our country, we don't have that facility. <coughs> But if I compare Keith Francis from Australia, he is a gold medalist of Commonwealth Games. Yearly, he got 70,000 Australian dollar scholarship. And he had sports science and sports management support. He was fully professional with full-time scholarship. And he practiced the best possible environment in the world. And in 100 meter, he, he, his timing was 11.5. <coughs> However, for Francis Kampuan from Papua New Guinea, he had no scholarship, no sports science and no uh, sports management support. He was uh, practicing occasionally and it was his voluntary, uh, voluntary wish and he used to practice in their local land. And do you know like what was the timing of him? It was only five second difference. Even though he practiced in local land, the different he he got a silver medal, and the difference was 0.5 seconds. So we know, like we we under if we understand our context, and if we if we are clever, if we think differently and utilize our local resources, we can also participate internationally, and we can also. Uh, do something like uh, Francis Campuan. We know we have a lot of challenges, so if we can work, all of us can work together. We know like there is an assumption of this, that a person with disability cannot do anything in our society. So if we take this as a social problem and person with disability as a beneficial, 
and we all are stakeholders and we do some activities, there will be outcome and there will be impact in our society and it will change the perception of our country. So now I would like to share many these stories. When he was 18 years old, he, he had a road traffic accident and he became paralyzed. And he received treatment from CRP. When he went back to his community, his life was like living in a room. We went there, we teach him how to play table tennis by using a uh, Partex board. And after that, we, with the group, he also give them feedback. So from a life of inside house, now he is taking the leadership role and he is highly respected in his area. So the whole perception of the community, of the village has changed. If they see someone like him, they will also understand that they, they also have the potential, they can also do something. What we can do, if we can, all of us could do like, raise a lot of awareness about disability sports. It could be through Facebook, through work, from our position, whatever possible, if we could do raise, awareness raising, person with disability get involved in disability sports more. And if we can build environment as well, it could be indoor, outdoor, on our local context, we have to change our attitudinal environment as well. We have to give them the environment where it's more friendly, because first experience is more important. If they come to us and we don't take care of them, if they had a bad experience, they will never come to participate in sport. And we have to also take a policy environment. If we have to be non-discriminatory. It has to be uh, equitable for a person with disabilities. And they also have to have the information and communication environment. They, if we could uh, make some materials or maybe video, now, social media is very <coughs> vast in our country. We can u even use social media to introduce different sports to the person with disability. At last, I would say nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I am possible. Thank you. Also, the organizing secretary of Spinal Cord Injury Development Association of Bangladesh is going to share his sports experience with us today. Upustid, Utidi Bindu, Assalamu Alaikum. Ami Saleh Ahmed, Unni Shotra Shishale, Karoi Jhon Gaste ke kore ke Spinal Cord Injury hoye jai. Iti kore cover niste ke puru tei aboshoye jai. In the medical college hospital, the CRP is a pass-pass. The first thing is that 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 the the Unisho Siashi Shale, CRP Pokoteke, Bangladesh, Potinidoi, Nottingham, England, Ulcher Babarka Hishavi, Jablin, or Short Put, Dutu the Silver Medal PC. I mean, Unisho no Bushali, Japan, Unishito Pacific, Kim Samson Kuri, Unisho Churan no Bushali, Malusia, Razdani Koala Lamper, Unishito Facebook, Kim Samson Kuri, Unisho Nirano Bushi. Nirano Bishale, Thailand, Razdani Bank, Unishito Facebook, Kim Samson Kuri, for a bronze for the PC. Duyadashale, Australia, Australia, Sydney, the Unistito Para Olympic Hong Shogun Guri. Duhaza Doshale, China, Juang Jutu Unshito, Asian Para Games Hong Shogun Guri. Echara Jatio Parja Putibundi Diri Kalai, Duhaza Chutu Shal Putu Putunto, Putti Motor, Hong Shogun Kore, Kom Poki Chakti Kuri Pushkar Bichi. Amiak Shomai, Bangladesh Olympic Association, nearby Shodosho Silam. 
বর্তমানে আমি গাজীপুরের কালিয়াকুর উপজেলা প্রতিবন্ধন পরিষদের সহসভাপতি এবং স্পাইনাল কর্ড ইনজুরি ডেভেলপমেন্ট অ্যাসোসিয়েশন বাংলাদেশ সিটাবের সাংগঠনিক সম্পাদের দায়িত্ব নিষ্ঠার সাথে পালন করে আসছি তবে আমি মনে করি যে আমার মতো প্রতিবন্ধী ভাই ও বোনেরা অনেক কষ্ট ও হতাশার মধ্যে জীবনযাপন করছেন এছাড়াও আমার মনে হয় যে সবাইকে মনে করতে হবে নিজ নিজ মেধা যোগ্যতার বলে সব কিছু করা সম্ভব আমি খেলাধুলার জগৎ থেকে অনেক কিছু পেয়েছি দেশে বিদেশে অনেক বন্ধু পেয়েছি এতে করে নিজের আত্মবিশ্বাস অনেক গুণে বৃদ্ধি পেয়েছে এছাড়াও শারীরিক সক্ষমতা থেকে অনেক বেড়েছে যা কোনো কাজকে অসম্ভব বলে মনে করি না বাংলাদেশের প্রতিবন্ধীরা খেলাধুলার ক্ষেত্রে যথেষ্ট অবদান রেখে চলেছে স্পোর্টস ফর হেলথ অ্যান্ড ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্সি সকল সরকারি বেসরকারি প্রতিবন্ধীদের প্রতিষ্ঠান মহল থেকে উৎসাহ দিলে এবং সকলের সার্বিক সাহায্য সহযোগিতা পেলে বাংলাদেশের প্রতিবন্ধীরা আরও সম্মান বয়ে আনতে পারে বিশেষ উল্লেখ্য যে দুই সাল থেকে বাংলাদেশের প্যারালিম্পিক কমিটি সাসপেনশন অবস্থায় আছে যার কারণে আমরা প্রতিবন্ধীরা বিদেশের মাটিতে খেলাধুলা অংশগ্রহণ করতে পারছি না এই কারণে আমি যথাযথ কর্তৃপক্ষের দৃষ্টি আকর্ষণ করছি যাতে করে আমরা প্রতিবন্ধীরা পূর্বের ন্যায় বিদেশের মাটিতে খেলা অংশগ্রহণ করতে পারি এই আশাবাদ ব্যক্ত করে সবার সবাইকে আমার আন্তরিক ও ধন্যবাদ জানিয়ে আমি সংক্ষিপ্ত বক্তব্য এখানে শেষ করছি আসসালাম আলাইকুম Bao, a brilliant mind, is the prosecutor of international crimes tribunals and he's also one of the directors of ELCO, that's Empowerment to Law of the Common People. Today he's going to discuss human rights and disability for us. Thank you. I have this short presentation. I don't know if it's short, it's 25 slides long, but I'll try to be as focused as possible. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Shri, uh, Shri for uh, organizing this event and giving me the opportunity. This would be my, oh, I think uh, there is a problem with the font. Yeah, uh, I think just press Control A and then probably all will, Control A and then everything. slide by slide. I'll, I'll every slide. I have to take every slide? Okay, yes, then, then yes, control A. Then. Yeah. Yeah, just for my slide one. Just one. To go on. So you can make it. Hello guys, good morning. I'm Mahfiz Islam, one of the servants of Bangladesh Rugby. I'm the country coordinator of Bangladesh Rugby. I coordinated all coaches in Bangladesh. We have made like 100 coaches. And we have to coordinate who will do what. Thank you. Uh, thank you. My name is Ansan Shogun, and I'm the Rugby Development Manager of Bangladesh Rugby Federation Union. And as well as I'm the uh, under 14 and under 16, no, I'm the national coach, so thank you. Hello, good morning. I'm Andy Pine Shaka, come from Bangladesh Amateur Rugby Club, manager. Very good morning. My name is Pine Mong from United <coughs> Purpose. Thank you for inviting us. Good morning. My name is Gorom Shubhadi Khan. I'm national coach in shooting position. 
Good morning. Uh, I am Rathun Hussain. I am also working with Save the Children. Thank you. Good morning. This is Rizal. I am also working with Save the Children. Good morning. I am Gautam Vashak, self employed and a volunteer of SHE. Good morning. I am Mohammad Asim Jamal. I am from CRP. Good morning. I am Sayyid Saleh Ahmed, Swimming Coast, Bangladesh Swimming Foundation. Uh, Subcommittee member Paralympic Association. Uh, I am Mustafa, Bangladesh Swimming Federation Swimming Coach, as well as Special Olympic Head Coach. I am Munna, Chaudhry School, Chaudhry School. Good morning, everyone. I am Kondabar Al Mustafa Villa, table uh, tennis coach, MBKSP, and uh, Pillar of national team and uh, national champion. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Um, Morshad Pilla. I come from Society for the Welfare of Autistic Children. So, Assalamu alaikum. Very good morning. This is Salim Rahman, Manager Rehabilitation Wing, CRP. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to everybody. This is Samia Chaudhary and I'm the Deputy Head of MTB Group Communications. And it's an absolute honor for me to be part of this workshop today because we, at our bank, we have some very unique CSR initiatives and I'm, I'm looking forward to working with she in the exciting times ahead. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Alida Vinkasaki, lecturer, Department of Law and Human Rights, University of Asia Pacific. I'm representing Elcop today. Good morning, I'm from Wells Fargo and I am responsible for our CSR activity. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Muhammad Hafizul Islam. I'm from CRP Shabar. Assalamu alaikum. I'm the Shumun Nambet. I'm from Banga Motor. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Cunningham. I'm an associate professor at the University of Houston, and I research disability sport. Good morning, everybody. My name is Valerie Taylor. I'm the founder of CRP. Assalamu alaikum, and good morning to all of you. I'm Ayuddin Babur. I do CSR consultancy. And uh, right now, I'm an advisor to Lafarge Home Sim Cement Company. Thank you. Thank you. I am Salih Ahmed. I'm a spinal cord injury developer of CDAP. Good morning, everybody. I'm Dr. Sidibol. I'm working with ELCO. And that's all. My name is Benny Khan. I'm the Vice President of SHE. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short tea break now and we'll uh, resume our uh, workshop after the tea break. Thank you. Please. Thank you. 
Sports is a human right, but you will see that through explanation and interpretation of legal terms, sport can be termed as a right, and definitely this is uh, one of the means, or you can say a transport, so that human rights can be achieved through different uh, paradigms. So this is the international framework. I'll just name a few: which are Universal Declaration on Human Rights, 1948, where we know about the child's rights, are children's rights are protected over there. International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, I International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Convention on the Rights of the Child, or CRC, and th then CRC <coughs> have two protocols, Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman, or Degrading Treatment or Punishment. These are also included in the sense that you have to uh, I, we wanted to say that you have to introduce the sports for the healthy upbringing of every person, even if they are a criminal or an accused in any sector. So these are always, and even there are certain judgments in, in, in the Second World War, we have found that when these rights were denied to those kids who were kept in the torture cells, uh, then it was termed as crimes against humanity. So these were very interesting findings. From that perspective, these are included. Then uh, regional frameworks are there, African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child, European Convention on the Exercise of Children's Rights, American Convention on Human Rights, African Charter on Human and People's Rights are there, but unfortunately there is no regional framework in Asia. And national framework, uh, under those international frameworks, the Constitution of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, obviously, then we have Children Act 2013, the Prevention of Women and Children Repression Act 2000, the Prevention and Suppression of Human Trafficking 2012, Labor Act 2006, Pornographic Control Act 2012, Penal Code 1960, Protection of the Rights of Disabled People Act 2013, and then the New O Development Disability Protection Trust Act 2013. Mechanisms to protect the Human Rights Council is there, the treaty bodies, the state, the treaty bodies under those uh, declarations or the treaties I have read earlier, uh, this inter under this international framework, <coughs> there is these treaty bodies, they are also responsible for protecting child's rights. Uh, NGOs, National Human Rights Commission, special courts and tribunals are there. 
rights enshrined in international documents childhood is entitled to special care and assistance under article 25 sub article 2 of udhr right to education free and compulsory at least at elementary stage right now in bangladesh the elementary stage is up to class 8 article 26 of uh, the udhr rights of the family and its members including special protection for mothers children and young persons article 10 of the icsr then right to health physical and mental article 12 of of the icesr right to education article 13 of the icsr uh, then there are other i'm not going to go uh, i mean in extensively only the last one which is rights of children article 24 of the iccpr which says that every child shall have without any discrimination as to race color sex language religion national or social origin property or birth the right to such measures of protection as are required by his status as a minor on the part of his family, society, and the state. Then, uh, UN Convention on the Rights of Child 1989, uh, what are stated, the focal focus points are the most comprehensive document, addresses the granting and implementation of rights in both peacetime and in situations of armed conflict. The CRC enshrines the adoption principle to be viewed from the child's perspective, and the CRC's concerns are four Ps. Number one, participation of, by children in decisions affecting them, affecting them, protection of children against discrimination and all forms of neglect and exploitation, prevention of harm to them, and provision of assistance to children for their basic needs. Please uh, read the last one very carefully, the provision of assistance to children for their basic needs, and the first one, participation by children in decisions affecting them. These are would be the focal points later on. The right to participate in proceedings along with the principles of non-discrimination and provision for the child's best interests form the guiding principles of this convention. The convention creates new rights for children under international law that previously had not existed. Child-specific versions of existing rights are there and then provides global treaty rights that previously had only been found in case law under regional human rights treaties. They'll, those are uh, included in CRC. Now, international framework for disabled children. Uh, for disabled children, there is this convention on the rights of persons with disabilities, specifically Article 30, sub-Article 5, which says about participation in cultural right, life, recreation, laser, and sport. Sub-Article 5 starts, I'm just going to read it because this is very important for us, that with a view to enabling persons with disabilities to participate on an equal basis with others in recreational, laser, and sporting activities, state parties shall take appropriate measures to encourage and promote the participation to the fullest extent possible of persons with disabilities in mainstream sporting activities at all levels, B, to ensure that persons with disabilities have an opportunity to organize, develop, and participate in disability-specific sporting and recreational activities, and to this end, encourage the provision on an equal basis with others of appropriate instruction, training, and resources to ensure that persons with disabilities have access to sporting, recreational, and tourism venues, to ensure that children with disabilities have equal access with other children to participation in uh, play, recreation, and laser and sporting activities, including those activities in the school system, to ensure that persons with disabilities have access to services from those involved in the organization of recreational, tourism, laser, and sporting activities. Bangladesh uh, is a state party to this uh, international convention, and we know from the story of Salibhai that uh, still this ar article is not being followed by Bangladesh very closely, because last few years there is no sports for disabled persons. They are not participating in the Paralympics. Uh, uh, now, if we talk about national framework, then we have to come back to the Constitution of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. We have to start with that. So, fundamental principles are basically in Article, uh, in Article 15 of the Constitution on basic necessities. Two things are made mandatory. One is health and education. And both of them include sports, definitely, for health purpose and also education purpose. If we go into fundamental right part, we will see Article 32 on right to life. And it has to be read together with two leading judgments, actually. One is uh, from India, which is Bondhu Amati Morcha versus the Union of, Union of India. This describes, in this case, the court described the right to life as it must include 
protection of the health and the strength of workers, men and women, and of the tender age of children against abuse, opportunities and facilities for children to develop in a healthy manner and in conditions of freedom and dignity, educational facilities, just and human conditions of work and maternity relief. So it, it is about everyone. It's not about any like normal children or disabled children. It is about, it includes all children, this definition of right to life. In Bangladesh, Dr. Mohiuddin Farooq versus Bangladesh, uh, it's about condensed milk case. It's known very popularly about like that. So in, in the, the single line over there, that the, a man has natural right. And here, man does not only mean man, male. It means everyone. A man has natural right to the enjoyment of a healthy life and longevity up to normal expectation of life of an ordinary human being. So uh, now, after reading this, uh, if we look into the protection of the rights of disabled people are at 2013. Here, uh, this right has actually recognized 21 rights of disabled people, which includes rights to educational, physical, and psychological improvement, rights to participation in social and state activities, rights to get the national identity cards and be listed in the voters' role, Mandates, enrollment in regular schools, reservation of seats on all forms of public transportation, accessibility provisions in all public places, including retrofitting, equal opportunities in employment, and protection of inherited property rights. So the situation is a little bit better because before 2013 there was no law for uh, uh, like uh, categorizing these rights, but now at least we have these rights. Uh, but implementation, that's a big question, that how far government is implementing these rights and these law, that's a, actually a big question and that is for us to see in the future. Now, uh, in the same year, this is actually from zero to there is a big leap because neurodevelopment disability, for a long time, these type of diseases were not, I mean, I would say disease, these type of disability was not recognized at all. Not recognized. So from zero, we have all of a sudden, in the in, in very modern, we had a very modern forum under this law, the Neuro Development Disability Protection Trust Act 2013. A trust is made under this act by the government so that they can facilitate the equal participation of neuro disabled persons. So this act actually highlights the issues related to providing physical, psychological, and economic assistance to all persons with disabilities. Their nurture, security, and rehabilitation ensures their social empowerment focuses to develop pertinent education system with knowledge paradigm. However, there is this trust. They have this office in Agarga as well. However, uh, I haven't seen state-wide activities from this trust. And it is not very clear from my side that how much money is actually available under this trust, and who are like who can apply for this trust trust fund. This is not very clear. But from the mandate of the law, this trust should be available for every organization or every person who is willing to work for the neuro development uh, neuro disabled persons for their development. Now uh, there are certain health issues which are very common for all kinds of children. I'm not going to that, that, uh, those uh, issues, but we know that these issues, we can confront these issues by sports. Now, uh, resolving these problems through outdoor play, we are suggesting that, not only suggesting, now this is established all over the world, that playing and recreational activities are vital elements of the normal growth and development of children and are widely used to alleviate the stress experienced by pediatric patients and their families during hospitalization. Early childhood development through playing, strength and capability through playing, recreational and play equipment to be available always, introduce child cares with playing facilities and promote psychosocial well-being by providing opportunities for activities such as play, recreation and education. So uh, now, if we consider the international framework, the national framework, and the resolving these problems through outdoor playing, then you will see that there is this linear connection that if for the betterment of a child or even a human being, for anyone even 18 plus, you need to have some sort of outdoor activities like through playing. 
you need to play for your health, for your uh, mental stability, you need to participate in sports. Now, uh, there are two development goals set so far by United Nations. One, we have seen that passed in 2015, that is known as uh, Millennium Development Goals. So in Millennium Development Goals, it has been categorically said in 2000 that sports need to be attached with all the goals. Sport can be attached with all these goals. First of all, eradicate extreme poverty and hungers. How? I have just given an, an example that connecting vulnerable individuals to the community supports and services, for example, disabled persons, they can be connected. As uh, Salehwai said, as Papu Bhai shown through his presentation, that vulnerable individuals like disabled persons can be connected to the community. They can become community leaders. So this was put in the Millennium Development Goals. Achieve universal primary education. These sports can motivate children to enroll in the school. Then it promotes gender equality and empower women. Sport helps improve female physical and mental health and offers opportunities for social interaction and friendship. Then it reduces child mortality. Sport can help reduce the rate of high-risk adolescent pregnancies. Improve, uh, Im improve maternal health. Sport for health programs offer girls and women greater access to reproductive health information and services. It helps to, uh, sport programs can be used to reduce stigma and increase social and economic integration of people living with HIV and AIDS. Uh, Sport-based public education campaigns can raise awareness of importance of environmental protection and sustainability. Now, we are going through sustainable development goals. It's up to 2000, 2030 that these will be the program of United Nations and all of its organizers, uh, I mean, allied organizations. And there also, they have recommended that sports again sh should be the forefront of in achieving all the goals. That, for example, sports is a cost-effective and powerful tool for promoting important human values such as respect for rules and for others, teamwork, discipline, diversity, hospitality and empathy. Sports instill healthy lifestyle choices among children and youth by helping them remain active and combat non-communicable diseases. Gender equi uh, equality. Sports helps girls and women build self-esteem and develop skills needed to become equal participants and leaders in their various communities. The power of sports in social inclusion is also brought to play in its ability to create awareness about social inclusion for persons with disabilities. Sports has a strong convening power with the ability to raise visibility, understanding and achievement of the SDGs worldwide. Sports has the potential to create jobs. Now, uh, challenges for disabled children in sports, you will see that uh, Papuda's slides and my slides regarding challenges are quite similar because everybody with a, if think very, well, sitting very, uh, I would say still, and think about it, they will find these are similar challenges, which is lack of equipment, inaccessible facilities, lack of fields, lack of awareness about the rights of children to play, both general and disabled kids, lack of state policies, lack of funding, lack of NGO government coordination, lack of training and sports education. One thing I forgot to mention, that is lack of political commitment. That is, again, if that is not there, then you won't find all these visible. Uh, my recommendations, more public-private partnerships are needed in the sports world to drive the achievement of the SDGs by the leveraging on the various expertise of the various stakeholders. These includes governments, private sector organizations, and local communities. There is also a need for governments to create policies that promote these partnerships that can fast track the achievement of the SDGs through sports. So again, uh, I, I, I am at the last slide. So again, you see that sports, even it is not recognized in pen and paper as a human rights, but through their activities, the United Nations and other organizations have shown that sports is the correct means to deliver the message of human rights to the children and to the disabled children, to include them in the society. If not, they wouldn't have put so much emphasis on sports. Right? So my last words that this year, thanks, thankfully the world celebrates the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. 
a monumental document which established the laws and principles related to the equality of all individuals and their inalienable right to dignity. Sport is one of the best ambassadors to promote human rights and the inclusion of all. Through sport, people learn values that cross gender, creed, nationality, age, economic position, and even physical condition. So thank you once again for being patient. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Mohyuddin Babur. He is the advisor of Lafarge Wholesome Limited, and he is also the founder of Mangrove Children, a project, a wonderful project that only proves that it only takes a small step and good intention to make a difference, and everything falls in places. He's going to discuss CSR and disability in Bangladesh today. Mr. Bafford, thank you. Not disabled like many thousands and millions, so thank Almighty for that. We're talking of sports. I can translate that for you. I'm going to say that we would have done in a sports field. We would feel much more. Next time. Next time. <laughs> Under the tree, you know, like that. Exactly. Or beside a swimming pool. Huh? Yes. So, so that if you don't like the, the speaker, we jump into the water. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but thank you very much. Very interesting. For me, the first time such an experience, and I'm really enlightened with a lot of information. Amake Jokon Shermin last week, the week so, told me that I have to come and then to speak. So, Shermin request my order. So I thought that I have, I cannot escape, so I have to go. But now I'm feeling that, I mean, it's really good. I come to learn and know so many things and share my own experience about it. I think Valerie is here. She has dedicated her life for the welfare of disabled people. Maybe she will have to open another wing in the next few years. People in the next decades, you will find millions of people with neck problem. You know why? Cell phone. Yes. <coughs> the technology, the cell phone, now people are just like this. So what a pressure on your neck. So I'm sure maybe in the next decades you will have to wait have another <laughs> wing with, with the neck, you know, problems. Anyway, I hope that doesn't really occur. But you're talking of sports, and we're talking of sports for the disabled people, or less able people. But even the able people are not having opportunities for sports. Look at people living in small apartments. Bacharato, they just can't go out of the room. Even the balconies, they have this much. And then the mother keeps a lot of flower tubs there. <laughs> Mosquitoes and dengue problems are there. But true, it is that we don't have space even for the our considerations of the public works department. There is a still we follow the British rule for education, establishing educational institution, where it is clearly written that you must, your room size must be this, you must have a field, isn't it? But who follows? So the children, whether able or disabled, no one has the opportunity for sports, not to talk of independence, not to talk of hope. Sports is definitely a vital tool to achieve all the rosy MDGs and SDGs, but the core thing, the family ties. I'm sure if we take a survey, you will also observe that your children coming back from the school, getting down to computer and all those things. So their games are limited to computers and laptops and all those things. So open field and all these things are very much necessary. Well, 
to do little justice to the topic that I have been invited for, CSR, because CSR has been my obsession for the last few decades, and I've been working on it for different companies, for telcos, for sales <coughs> companies, even <coughs> helping a bank, Samia is here, we were working together for a project. Because CSR, when you talk of CSR, it immediately gets into the private sector. And private sector is the biggest contributor to socio-economic development. There is, you cannot deny this. Because it is the biggest employer, whether it's a multinational or a local corporate, it is the biggest ut utilizer of re natural resources. It is the biggest in terms of production. So there's a lot of responsibility on the private sector. And incidentally, even CSR, it's a buzzword for the last few decades, there is a paradigm shift in CSR. Before it was much like a voluntary thing and much like a philanthropic. Actually, one of meal is there, Pashe actor Morjit Dorkar, Morjit Kuridilo, actor School Dorkar, School Kuridilo, you know, like this. We have many examples of Adamji, Chittaranjan, and all those things. So, CSR is nothing new here. It has been here for ages. What is the abbreviation of CSR? Corporate Social Responsibility, Shamajik Dai Bhattata. Mane, Shamajik Puti, actor company, Ki Dai, Shete. It is not only to, to, to just produce the chocolate, but I get Kyoto, I mean, chocolate produce good time, Tapode, Kichuhole, I mean, at the hospital, but school could be But now, CSR also means what type of chocolate I'm making. Even the ingredients, whether it is coming from a field where you have child labor, Jarjondo, Amade, garments are on a problem, which you know, you remember after the Dana Plaza. So in Spain and others, they boycott <laughs> our goods. So CSR is now, it's a, it's a broader thing, and it is no more called CSR, it is social responsibility. The human rights is a very important factor. I'm happy Tapos has dealt very broadly and nicely and neatly about all the human rights. So I, I'm not an expert on human rights, so uh, you know, I'll just Keep the touch point on it. So, since human rights is a basic component for development, whether it is SDG or conventional development or whatever it is, I mean, we have to see the rights of the disabled people or less able people or even what we say differently able, able people, isn't it? So, what we say PWDs, people with Disabilities. So, <coughs> yesterday I was just going through some, you know, facts and figures, and I found that almost 10 percent of the global population is PWD. 10 percent and more. In one of the slides, I saw 16 percent, right? In your slide. So. So more than 10% of the global population are either disabled or less able or differently able. But or from the government level, and as mentioned, the political commitment, and in the government level, in the NGO level, this awareness is still, I think, is at a very low ebb. Only those who are working with NGOs, like Save the Children or other organizations, UNDP, maybe they are concerned. But the local, I'll just tell you a little story. Uh, when I was working for a telco, we took up a project with Impact Foundation, one source, and we wanted to have a, we had a doctor coming from Australia, and Impact Foundation has a boat hospital. So it goes around the villages in the country with a very good operation theater and everything. So we had a doctor coming from Australia and New Zealand, two doctors, for club fit surgery. You know, club fit. We went to the villages and villages. The response was very poor. The response was very poor. 
Why? Because in the rural areas, still, unara ekono bishash koren onenge je hoy food dile ba je local eglo jhar jhopta eglo. So they are still fearful of. But those who came, it, they, you know, Mughal Pai Manetik, we just made it all right. They were given shoes and everything. They were normal. But to break that barrier, we couldn't break. And we had to stop that program. So a corporate wanted to do, but because of the lack of awareness and also resistance, in some cases, I was about to, when I went to the field, I wanted to be beaten by the local people. That I came with a, you know, a theory, you know, anti-human theory something. So I escaped somehow. In a motorbike, I just came back. I was almost about to be beaten, but never mind. These are the, as I said, challenges. So awareness, we have to change the attitude. So we can do, but... A corporate cannot just go to the village and start working. You have to in have the involvement of the government, of the local bodies, of the NGOs, all together, right? In concert, we have to do. We have to have empowerment for these disabled people. I'm very happy to see uh, his performance, extraordinary performance in whatever contest he went. You know, it empowers him. Now, he goes and teaches other people. Like, like him, there are many other examples. Uh, we see sometimes in newspaper that many of I mean, disabled people, they just write with their feet and everything like that, but they succeed and everything. Then, support. This is also a challenge. It's shocking to hear that, got a WhatsApp? Teacher, WhatsApp, what happened there? A initiative for China. No, I mean that. Eight years. Eight years, okay. It's a very sad thing. So the government should come up, the political leaders should come up, the social leaders, not only blame the political leaders, sometimes they are, themselves are not aware what to do. So social leaders, social thinkers, philanthropists, and as a whole, the corporates. Now I'm sure, corporate only some here. So I'm sure a lot of corporate houses, because this is the difficulty what I find when I go to different corporate bodies to explain them that you must do the CSR. They say, I'm not a Kori. Ki Kori, I'm at the school college. We do a hospital. So very limited thinking, as though Bangladesh Bank has a circular that you have to do a CSR program, which you have to report back to them. They just I'm sorry, Samia, please don't mind. The normal corporate CSR habit is Tara winter at Juno Apaka Kore, winter Ashley at the Kombul Nijabe, our Kombul Ediki did check into Festo Photo Dikem and a photo Junoi, Kombul the Dawa Hoche, our Pore then, due to good relation with the newspaper, newspaper taking you, Ashen. I'm sorry, yeah? but I'm not hitting at you. At the Boro Tinchar in Chick, Tinchar Column in Chick at Chobi. So this is, so we have to have this change of attitude from all sides, also the corporate, right? So the real thing, get a lag bit on ground. You see, it's about six, seven years back. <coughs> my stunning experience, I was in Copenhagen, Denmark. I mean, Basikura Jatshi. Suddenly at one Chenablo, then I saw someone in wheelchair getting out. It came at the level of the footpath. One side. One side, well, exactly. And chair. And my hair raises <coughs> still now. Because that was the experience, how much respect we give to the welfare of the people, disabled people. Now, when we want to reach that height, isn't it? When? God knows. Similarly, just two weeks back, I was in Jasor. So while coming back, I couldn't get any air ticket. So I had to take the train. With me, there was my uncle, very aged. I'm young, 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 I
he was even much more aged. I can still walk. He can't walk normally. So he had to board the train. Platform a kene, a train a bogi a kene. So immediately I thought, how to pull him, put him there? <coughs> so we brought the kuli and bullam request kulam by a two so I was thinking, why can't the corporates, the government of corporates can help in making a ramp for the disabled people in one or two or disabled towns. But this is a very little thing, but imagine how much benefit and service you are giving. What is at the end of the day? It is a service to the beneficiaries. So this is a very little thing. So I was just thinking at that point, our mind that to see us blended way, so corporate ke dhara jay. So I said the railway department I just gonna blow the kitchen I call it. The platforms are here and the you know the railway coaches when you enter is here. It's a quite a big distance. Teacher team feels a hobby. So it's a big thing. So, so these are the little things. Now they're good sign. There are a lot of new buildings which is, uh, which are coming up uh, in Bonani area. I see they make a ramp for the wheelchair users. Of course, the number of wheelchair users, whether real or unreal, it is also increasing. So, <laughs> it's, it's abuse of wheelchair. Yeah, that's right. So, so support has to come from the government, from the NGOs, from the philanthropists. And support like this, real concrete support. Even what you said, that fails, you know. I'm so happy that support is also coming from private level because as she told me that in Murvi and other places, people living in Ottawa and other places, they are donating their houses and places uh, to the welfare of CS, uh, CRP and other things. Commitment. One good news is that a lot of, because of the SDG pressures and everything, a lot of corporates are now going for diversity. So even in employment, they have no, you know, hardline attitude against female or disabled, you know, like that. In, in fact, in some companies, they are giving preference to females, for example, female workers, right? So, so this sort of thing, because they want to bring an equilibrium and the diversity. So even if they have the opportunities for the disabled, that is very good. So all these things are quite okay. But how can you ensure the participation of the corporates in this? Number one, you have to go and knock at the door of the corporates and tell them that, look, this is it. The best practices, the success stories of the disabled people, the needs of the disabled people, who are, you know? So, the success stories, I'm sure, I'm sure the corporates do not know. Right? So you have to go and convey this, make another forum. I would have been very happy if you had invited more corporate people here. Next time you can do that, right? I'm sure they would like to. This is such a cause. Uh, everyone's heart and mind will be open to it. Right? Okay. So we did, uh, in fact, two, three months back at Lafarge, we had one. Uh, round table and the title was safety for construction workers mm -hmm. oh, shit. Okay. <coughs> when you give the loan make a condition that you will have proper safety equipments and safety you know, you will consider the safety hazards and everything. Don't give the loan without their commitment to it. Now, a lot of, you know, Shanta and others, they have very good safety 
uh, BGI and good companies they have still. But many more, you see uh, Atala, Noitala building a Katskurche without any safety harness, right? So, you know, that, so that was a good initiative and I'm sure that should continue from all. And, but in this case, I'm sure if you can disseminate more among the corporate, you will get the corporate involvement, and which is very vital, because corporates have their CSR policies. Now it is a competitive age. CSR has come to be a competitive age. The K Kotota society jono bhalo korte pare. Whether you are throwing bad water into the field or good water, whether that should be the CSR model, right? So that is it. And I think if you go around and knock at the corporates, I'm sure, because they are starving, struggling to make CSR policies. Devashish Naik, what I got? Devashish? He knows uh, that, frankly speaking, Sami, I'm not eating at you, many corporates, they are, they are struggling to make good CSR, because CSR, Econactor, Competition age You must remember that Daily Star, uh, DHL, CSR awarded that. Just last week, I received a letter from the president's office that pres next year take a president's gold medal for social work for the businessman. So, which means what? Things are coming. They are. I mean, awareness in Kolkata already the government is having the awareness. Now it's up to the people. So, I mean, organizations like SHI and others, Save the Children, and all, all you can just go into it. But get the corporates. Corporates have the fund. Ambani has the fund for billions to spend on the wedding. I'm sure he can give millions to the welfare of this. And that is enough, isn't it? They're doing. They, are, they do. They do, I know. Massive. I mean, because they do why? Because in India, it's a very organized way. They have a ministry for corporate affairs. Can you imagine a ministry? And Section 135 of the Act, Companies Act 2013, right? In India, it clearly mentions what you have to do in CSR. For who? For the disadvantaged people for the disabled people. Clearly, you can go through, I'm sure my lawyer friend will know much better of me. You know, so Article 7 of Section 135 of the Indian Companies Act 2013. They changed it. It stipulates that any company which makes a profit of 5 crore and above 2% you have to contribute to social. You have to show. Not here where, but according to nine different things which supplements the government sector. For example, in Rajasthan desert, you see the picture of Rajasthan in tourism boat, what? Women carrying water. Miles and miles. Now they have taken a pipeline due to corporate and the water is there. So these women can now concentrate on <coughs> other things, on education, on... <laughs> Ministry, but we don't know how much is they spend for the disabled. But they have a department for empowerment of the uh, disabled people. So there is nothing wrong knowing good from other places. You can. I mean, everywhere there is. So I think it is growing, but our awareness is growing, our efforts are growing, but at a very slow pace. I think we can. And events like this will definitely get it up. People from, I'm happy to see we have lawyers, we have. Um, accounts people, we have NGO people, we have journalists, so different, you know. And Michael came all the way from states to 
share his experience. So we look forward to hearing from him. Thank you very much. Should you have right. Sir, sir. Yep. Uh, what's your provision for the corporate sales? What TNE &E you are providing training and education for the for the corporates, or they were uh, if they are aware of what they have to do? Well, you cannot train the corporates because corporates think they are well trained. They can train you. <laughs> so, uh, better not take the risk of training the corporates. So, you can give, suggest the corporates. You can advise the corporates. I'm sure if you knock 10 doors, two will listen to you. But, no, but but go with with a good example, good practice. But, but if what if we just making ensuring the uh, one of the representative come for as a workshop, <coughs> they can manage their their educations or their thinkings about CSR. Now, to I'm to, I'm to <laughs> now. Next time when you have you can have participation from the corporate. At least three places you are, you know. So get them involved. Get them. I'm sure they would love to because they are all struggling. The key code book, phone program code book. It's taking to key budget like that. It's not. They do have no experience. So with your expertise and experience, you can tell them. I'm very happy. I'm, you know, when I went to MTB Bank with my mangrove children project, my mangrove children project. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm taking little time. I asked them children that. First I went for a holiday, you know, just to visit. I asked the children, because I was in teaching for 16 years, so when I see children, I, you know, interact with them. So I asked them that a Shundarbon, describe me Shundarbon. <coughs> they tell me, Bak thake, badot thake, atki chana. <laughs> Ten children I ask the same answer. Bak, kumir, badot. I said that kiki paki thake, kiki mas jai. No one could say anything. So I said that they live 500 meters from the Sundarbon and they don't know Sundarbon. I live in Dhaka, I know more about Sundarbon. So what is the matter? There is a gap. So within two months I went back. I went there again and I talked to different schools. Many schools shut the door, said that NGO, oh my God, yeah, you know, so, so I kept on trying, it's a rural area, going on a motorbike, you know, I I learn motor the year, living in school, yeah, take the school, I'm okay. welcome for you, they welcomed me, and they said that, I said that I want to uh, teach these kids, I have some books for them, I mean, Bishop Saito can do take a kitchen boy here, you see, I just... And the headmaster, he welcomed me, and then we, I talked to the students, and the children, and I found that they're very interested. <coughs> so that gave me a boost. Again, after a few weeks, I went there. I said that, look, every time I'm going and coming, it's a matter of money. I'm staying there in a motel, you know. At that time, I had no job also. Bekar, we didn't know so many people. So I was doing my own consulting. So then I realized I started doing it for my own zakat and my family zakat. Zakat is, a, you know, what we have religious. We have to every year we have to give money to the poor. I could use a profit. So the project was increasing. Children were interested. They were just waiting for me to go and I was teaching them Amaro Porasana Hotsi Jatavishi slide slide banana to make my give them them gifts and all these things. And I made contests, art contests. The first picture they drew was nothing. Second and third became better and better and better. So back when I back akse bidale moto, kumir akse masen moto, mane era kumir kumchino, what things that then one day I was talking to the chairman of the bank, MTB Bank, incidentally he was known to me. So learning the story, he stood up and in front of me he called his uh, uh, Sami Chilokar, uh, officer concerned, said that 
we must participate in this program. I said, but no way. This is my program. <laughs> he said, Baba, wait, please. We, this is interesting. <coughs> so I said, okay, if you give them, I expand the program. So the MTB, you know, participated with financial support. And so I became Buet and I bought them a lot of scientific equipment, rain gauge, you know, thermometer, all these things whole lot of things. And I took them, gave them laptop, you know, television and all this, solar. So it became wonderful. So the project of the mangrove children, they know about the mangrove. They have to protect the mangrove. Because government also makes program to raise awareness against mangrove cutting. But what happens, it's a program where a lot of NGOs also concern on a geo jack. They go back to the forest and cut the trees. Because they have to live with it. Right? Honey. So, in this program, we are teaching these kids that don't allow your... Because what I thought, I must have exploited the emotional touch between... You know, Abu has get chocolate ni ashba. Apni bhule gele ho kintu abar firud ge chocolate ni ashba. So the children are such things. So I exploited that. So they go and tell their parents, we will start, but don't go to the forest. Don't go to the forest. You will be, you know, we don't want the wood. We don't want. It. So this way, I didn't succeed. Hundred percent, but at least twenty percent, and I am happy with it. At least Mr. Bacha.